Although it's already decades since Bruce Lee passed away, even today thousands of people are inspired about his charisma and martial arts skills. He has given us amazing stories, sights, and insights that we still find amazing. Yet what made this martial arts superstar so great? Why can't we never get enough of Bruce Lee? Hi, my name is Rogas Leo, and this time we're going back to look at a brief history of the secret of Bruce Lee. Born in 1940s at the Chinese hospital in San Francisco's Chinatown, according to the Chinese zodiac, Li was born in both the hour and the year of the dragon, which according to the tradition is a strong omen. Yet despite being born under a good sign, Bruce's life has its ups and downs right from the early age. After Li's birth, his family moved back to Hong Kong, where he was constantly taunted by English schoolboys who appeared to feel superior to the Chinese. This led Bruce to constantly getting into fights and eventually to the desire to learn martial arts. In 1957, Li began training in Bing Chun Kung Fu, where he already started showing signs of great persistence. After a year into his training, most of his fellow students refused to train with him when they learned of his mixed ancestry, as the Chinese were generally against teaching their martial arts techniques to non-Asians. Being as persistent as he was, Bruce didn't stop because of that and instead managed to convince his teacher, the great Yip Man, to teach him personally, which was a very rare success to any of his students. Bruce became deeply devoted to his training, and with that intense training he also showed great success, yet his devotion to development didn't stop there. Besides his martial arts practice, not many know that he was also into dancing, acting, and even poetry. He even won the Hong Kong Cha Cha Championship, and despite that the movie industry in China back then was not big at the time, following his passion for acting, he starred in more than 20 films before leaving the country. At the age of 18, in 1950, Lee returned to the United States with $100 in his pocket to continue his high school education. To earn money, he taught some dancing and later worked as a live-in waiter for a restaurant. Following his yearning for growth, in 1961, he joined the University of Washington. Again, he displayed his perseverance by completely devoting himself to his studies here. In order to further deepen his knowledge of martial arts, he intensely studied philosophy and psychology alongside drama and various other subjects. In order to support himself financially, he started teaching Kung Fu, first to his close friends and later, encouraged by them, opened his first martial arts school and even taught in the university where he met his wife Linda during the training. Following the success of his teaching, Lee decided to become a professional instructor and soon after opened a second school. Yet his hunger still didn't stop there. In 1964, some Chinese Kung Fu practitioners from San Francisco objected Bruce's teaching Chinese martial arts to Westerners, challenged him to a duel with the terms that if Bruce would lose, he would have to stop teaching. Lee was able to win, yet despite that, he was unhappy of not being able to beat his opponents in less than 3 minutes, and thus decided to deepen his exploration and martial arts even more, what led him to the evolution of his own style, Jeet Kune Do. In August 1964, Bruce was invited to give a public demonstration of his martial arts skills, where he performed so well that he was later suggested to star in a new TV show called The Green Hornet as the main sidekick. Nevertheless, that didn't stop Bruce from further developing his understanding of martial arts. Where most practitioners stop at a certain skill level, Lee not only continued to hone his skills, but also read and wrote extensively his thoughts about physical combat, psychology of fighting, philosophical roots of martial arts, motivation, self-actualization, and even liberation of the individual. There was rarely a time when Bruce was doing nothing. He was often seen reading a book, doing forearm curls, and watching a boxing film at the same time. Despite becoming extremely proficient, his arduous training also led to some negative results. Because of his extreme exercises, he eventually ended up hurting his spine so badly that the doctors predicted he would never be able to do Kung Fu again. Yet even here, he was able to show his perseverance and stubbornness to not take life's detours as final. After spending six months in bed, Lee created his own recovery program, which followed carefully, eventually led him back to full martial arts practice. Even in his acting career, he had ups and downs, but never stopped seeking his goals. Having limited attention in Hollywood, Bruce visited Hong Kong, where he was offered to star in various movies, which had great success. This led him to writing and even directing one of his today legendary movies, The Way of the Dragon, which also starred Chuck Norris. With Lee becoming famous in the East, more recognition in the West came too, and the first ever Hong Kong American co-production movie, now famously known as Enter the Dragon, has been filmed. Unfortunately, in 1973, when Bruce was only 32 years old, he didn't live to see the huge success of his last movie, as he suddenly died from what is now believed to have been a hypersensitive reaction to an ingredient in his pain medication. We oftentimes like to think that success is given only to the few lucky ones, that it's all about the talent, and that being an inspiring figure is only meant for the selected ones. But when we look closely at the unfortunately short yet amazing life of Bruce Lee and the positive impact he had in the history of the world, we start to understand that it is not only about being born under a positive omen. Imagine if 
Bruce would have become discouraged in his early age because of the taunting. Imagine if he would have stopped training martial arts when he was told that it's not meant for non-Asians. Imagine if he would have not dove into his passion for acting and dancing, if he had not dedicated himself to arduous studies and training and constant deepening of his knowledge. If not for all the persistence and endless hunger that he had, we would never have been touched by his wonderful life. Being born under a good omen is possibly just a light, positive touch in the beginning. Yet everyone has their ups and downs in their lives. Nonetheless, we see in Bruce Lee's example that it's not about being lucky, but it's about always staying hungry, always trusting in your passion and never stopping in the quest to achieve your goal. If Bruce Lee ever had a secret to his success, it is this. Do you agree with our conclusion? If not, what do you think Bruce Lee's success is? Let me know in the comments. Want to see more brief martial arts histories? Check to see how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu conquered the world. Also, click the like and subscribe buttons to support our channel. That helps us a lot. This was Rokas Leo, and see you on the virtual mat again soon.